President Trump is heading back to Europe tonight, this time to France, for its Independence or Bastille Day celebrations. But he leaves behind a swirl over his son's efforts to get damaging information about Hillary Clinton, provided by the Russian government. John Yang begins our coverage. Across Capitol Hill, the big question was what the bombshell revelations in Donald Trump Jr.'s emails do to the Russia investigation. At his weekly news conference, House Speaker Paul Ryan did his best to avoid commenting directly. We have a special counsel that's doing an investigation over the Justice Department. We have an investigation here in the House. We have an investigation in the Senate. I think it's very important that these professionals in these committees um, do their jobs so that we can get to the bottom of, of all of this. Mike Conaway, the Texas Republican leading the House investigation, didn't say much either. Do you have any concerns about what you're seeing now in the press reports about these meetings that he took with this Russian plan? Yeah, we're going to pursue every lead that needs to be pursued and every clue that needs to be pursued. Does this lead need to be pursued? We're going to pursue every lead that makes sense to be pursued. In an interview to be broadcast tomorrow on CBN, President Trump said Russian President Vladimir Putin would not have wanted to help him in the first place. If Hillary had won, our military would be decimated. Mm -hmm. uh, our energy would be much more expensive. That's what Putin doesn't like about me. <laughs> and that's why I say, why would he want me? Last night, Donald Trump Jr. offered his first public defense to Fox News Channel's Sean Hannity. In retrospect, I probably would have done things a little differently. Again, this is before the Russia mania. This is before they were building it up in the press. For me, this was opposition research. This morning, Mr. Trump gave his eldest son a rave review. He was open, transparent, and innocent. This is the greatest witch hunt in political history. I know. At his confirmation uh, hearing to be I FBI better. director, Christopher Without Ray was pressed fear. on that point. He I had a different view of the investigations, uh, including special counsel Robert Mueller's probe, than the man who nominated him. I'm asking you, as the future FBI director, you consider this endeavor a witch hunt? I do not consider Director Mueller to be on a witch hunt. Meanwhile, the president's legal team tried to distance their client from his namesake. The president wasn't aware of the meeting, did not participate in the meeting, did not attend the meeting, and was only made aware of the emails. Actually, actually, read, reading the emails, seeing the emails was yesterday when they were released. For Mr. Trump, the Russia story has become a burden he cannot escape no matter how hard he tries. Every time he appears to be moving in a different direction, another disclosure puts it right back front and center. Today, Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov seemed to sympathize. Today, I turned on the TV again, and all the Western channels are discussing only this. It is amazing how serious people can make a mountain when there might not even be a molehill. There's sure to be more discussion next week when the Senate Judiciary Committee wants former Trump campaign chairman Paul Manafort to testify about his role. For the PBS NewsHour, I'm John Yang. Later, the president told Reuters that he only learned of Donald Trump Jr.'s meeting with the Russian lawyer a few days ago. But he said, quote, I think many people would have held that meeting. He also said that he asked Russian President Putin last week if he had meddled in the U.S. election and that Putin said twice, absolutely not. We'll explore the legal implications of all this after the news summary.